communities can go after funding. And we've got uh, a site that's probably a quarter of an acre in Rochester where it's been designated as a brownfield site. If, but again, brownfields is, de is designed to, to, to recognize parcels where there is demonstrated pollution, but also those where there's the perception of pollution. So the Rochester, the site was old junkyard recycling place. Sure. Now it turns out that many, many years ago, most of the area was paved over and there weren't drains. So it's unlikely that there's a whole lot of pollution there, but the perception is it was a junkyard, so therefore it must be that type of thing. And the marketability of something like that becomes a whole lot less unless you can come up with either funding to remediate or work with the state. And I think the state has become um, pretty proactive in terms of finding ways in which you can reuse these properties, many times that are in the, in the developed in the old center parts of communities, as opposed to developing new land on the outside. Sorry, I don't like that. Find the development. Yeah, because yeah. it wasn't built. Yeah. Right, and you're in city city water, so you're not worried about a well. Exactly. I, I want to clarify in my own mind something you said, and I was aware of the fact the municipality can go for funds. Yes. The private property owners, there's no way they can go for funds. As far as it, generally, it's a it's a collaborative effort where the community and the private property owner have the same interest. But without the community interest, it would never happen. Correct. The private property owners. Yeah. If I'm going to conform with our agenda, uh, we are about ready to adjourn here, but we have new business here, and uh, what are important things that we need to get in this meeting quick before witching our curse? <laughs> no new business? Under other business, I just bring up, I, and I, I meant to bring this up, and I apologize for not doing this, when we were talking about the Coastal Program grant application, um, I think I mentioned this before in passing, at least, but I think we need to be really thoughtful about the language that we use, um, because in today's environment, um, phrases or buzzwords can take on a meaning of their own that doesn't necessarily, that different people look at different phrases. And, and come to different conclusions that can be very, very different. And, and, I, and the, the terminology of the phrase global warming or climate change, it seems to me, can mean very different things to different people. And so I, I would just encourage to the extent that when we're talking about um, things like that, that instead of using the shortened um, uh, phrase um, as, a, as an easy, is what we think is an easy way to describe what we're talking about, that we actually go into a little bit more detail and talk about what we're, so from a climate change standpoint, it seems to me better to be talking about how um, we're affected by changes, by the severity and frequency of storm events and things of that sort, because everybody can relate to that. But to the extent that climate change may mean other things to other folks, we lose part of our audience or there's a whole different understanding of what we're talking about that isn't necessarily intended. So. My suggestion, and again, I, for grant application and all the rest of the people who are receiving the grant application may have the same picture that we have, but to the extent that we're trying, again, to, to gather people in so we can all work collaboratively, we don't want people excluded or, or um, not interested to join us because they, they hear these buzzwords and it means something different. That we've definitely made an attempt to address that by using the term climate adaptation. Um, yeah. so I'm assuming that was chosen. Yeah, for, we for usually try to stay away from climate change, global warming, and use severe storm events, frequency, things like that, because that's everyone. That's something that everyone can sort of. Do. Thank you. Yeah. When you started that off, I thought you were going to mention that I had just used the witching hour, and in some circles, that's not very clear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, but that very far from that's my upbringing over 70 years ago when uh, out in the Midwest on the farm, and those are just phrases that everybody understood. And every once in a while, they just come out of my, and I never used that for a long time. But as soon as you said it, I said, uh oh, uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, I just did it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Chair, if you would entertain a motion to adjourn, I would entertain that. Then I'll make that motion. Thank you. And I have a second, and you can all be part, and we're only. Three minutes later, the card to my watch, but thank you very much. It was called the bewitching hour.
Yeah, he's with you.